Hello, everyone. Welcome to the TBR webinar series. Today, Principal Analyst Ezra Gothile will be discussing IoT use case stories, how use cases drive IoT. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping notes. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see a series of buttons. From left to right, you can access slides, audio controls, Q&A, speaker bios, and our survey. After the webinar, you will receive an email with a replay link, as well as a link to view and register for other TBR webinars. If you have any questions for us, please submit them via the Q&A widget in On24. You may also reach out to us after the event at webinars at tbri.com. Thank you again for joining us, and here is Ezra to begin the webinar. Thank you, Sarah. And um, I have to apologize. It is entirely my fault. We had a technical failure to in uploading the, the most recent version of the deck. So until and unless the deck goes live, um, I will be uh, simply speaking the, the content of, of the presentation. I frankly don't think that that is a terrible loss um, and, and, and begin to hold our discussion. And before I begin the, the official presentation, I want to simply address um, the, the current uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, and, and uh, how we believe it will affect IoT. In general, um, there, there are two major trends that we're contending with, with the deployment not just of IoT, but basically all digital transformation projects and technologies. The big one is, is the recession. Um, we believe that this recession will be deep and it will be long. There are segments of the economy, things having to do with travel, retail, uh, gatherings of people, that, uh, hospitality, that are not going to come back for quite a long time, both irrespective of, of, of what is done to address the actual pandemic both because uh, people will have gotten into other habits and some will continue to be fearful, and also because there are many uh, adaptations that uh, people will stick with because they find it more helpful. One of the effects of this global crisis is to accelerate a number of existing trends, and one of them is this distributed work trend. There's definitely been an increase of people working from home over the past more than a decade. And we believe that by the time the, the, the problems of the pandemic are solved, more people will be well ensconced in a remote working, working style. Another is the deployment of, of digital transformation projects and technology. And this is an area where we think that, that um, IoT will play a role. IoT and other digital transformation techniques provide greater flexibility, resilience, and the ability to deal with new data as it's coming in. So that once the current restrictions on movement and travel and contacts are lifted, we believe that IoT will be playing a larger role in what customers, what end customers will be doing to make their organizations uh, more resilient against these kinds of disruptions, and IoT is part of the picture. That, however, is in the context of a, a long recession, so that um, there will be f fewer new new projects, there will be fewer new companies, there will be uh, fewer new deployments, and IoT is very much favored when things are new. So our basic take is that IoT is going to be Investment in IoT, spending on IoT, initiation of IoT projects is going to be down for quite a while because of the recession. But as spending on various forms of technological ways to help business increases, IoT will play an even greater role than we had we had anticipated uh, before. So we see a slump, and then we then we see a, a considerable recovery but a long, a long and slow recovery economically. The, the digital transformation and IoT will, will play a greater role in that recovery. So let's begin the, the discussion. We um, went back and looked through a database we've created of, of use cases and actually of projects. We have well more than 500 
projects detailed in this database categorized by the, the typical ways we've categorized them in the past, which are things like uh, vertical geography, size, and, and a, a kind of uh, general taxonomy of types of use cases. We wanted to see if there were other things we could elicit from this large number of instances that could tell us more about the nature of IoT, especially how it uh, affects vendors trying to place their products and services uh, with their customers as part of IoT projects. So we looked back through these and we came up with a new categorization, a new taxonomy. It doesn't displace the old ones, but it supplements them that we think will be helpful for vendors in analyzing uh, opportunities and, and, and the, choosing the kinds of projects they want to pursue and in what, what fashion. Why, why do we need a new taxonomy? Well, IoT is uh, an ingredient in a vast array of very different projects. And there are any number of ways to slice that up. It's also not a thing unto itself, but rather an ingredient in a particular kind of solution. You basically cannot sell your customers IoT. So you need, you're selling them solutions, of course, that include IoT techniques. IoT, because of the fact that most IoT projects are multi-vendor, um, dictates multi multiple ways of, of going to market. And I see uh, we, have, we have gone alive with our, with our uh, presentation. So I'll move on to, on to the presentation and I'll click through some of the things I've already spoken about. There's a new taxonomy of IoT projects. We're looking at it for implications for vendors. And we're, we've drawn it from our use case and project database. Um, we've created it because IoT is pretty slippery. It's an ingredient in a very large array of, of solutions. And it's not in and of itself a thing that a vendor can sell unless they have a very flat horizontal IoT offering like the, the, the relatively small number of general purpose IoT uh, platforms. I misspoke myself. The, the vast number of generally general purpose IoT platforms, most of which are really much more specialized than they appear. Because of the partnership nature of, of IoT projects, get, selling IoT presents a lot of choices among diverse routes to market. And we believe this new categorization will help vendors make decisions about how they want to go to market with their offerings. And we believe this is important both for routes to market and for go to mar market tactics. This categorization will be helpful in choosing which tactics to use for which opportunities, and in fact, which opportunities to pursue. What, how are we driving this taxonomy? We've chopped it up by types of use cases and so on. So what's the new one? And we're looking at the project context, the project context in terms of the end customer. Where does it sit for the end customer? What is the end customer doing with that project? And how does it relate to other IoT projects, to data transformation, and, and, and for the rest of what they're doing to, in using technology to drive their businesses forward. We care about the organizational location of the projects. We've, we've spoken a good deal about operations technology. And it's very important to remember that while IT is kind of one thing, no matter what the business is, I, uh, OT is not. O, OT is really just a, a, a portmanteau term or a a grab bag of, of, of different technologies, depending on the nature of the business. It, they can be anything from, from logistics to process manufacturing to uh, energy extraction. So OT is very diverse. Finding out that something is an OT is helpful in the sense of you know who to talk to, but it's very hard to prepare to talk to many customers through their OT organizations because they're all very different. So we're looking for the context of, of individual opportunities, individual pro projects within the customer company's IoT digital transformation strategy. Not only where it's being built, 
but how does it fit in with other things the company is doing? We believe, and I think we can demonstrate, that that is important in, help, in deciding how to approach that opportunity. And there's some parallels in the, in the categorization where we're going to present here with IoT maturity. They move in a level of kind of increasing complexity, but it's not the same thing. IoT maturity, which we've spoken about, is more about the customer's readiness to, to integrate the IoT message, to see IoT in, in terms of, of their corporate strategy. This is a project-specific designation, and a, a company that's very mature in its approach to IoT may choose one of the simpler um, kinds of, of, of contexts in this, in, this, in this taxonomy. So let's finally get to the categories themselves. The simplest one we've spoken about it before is the point solution. This typically comes out of operations technology that's intended to just solve a, a single problem. The next step up is a point solution plus. That is to say, um, the, the the customer is building a, a solution to a specific problem, but building it with awareness of and planning for extensions of that solution as that solution comes online. Then there's a strategic IoT solution, which is a specific solution embedded within an IoT strategy. Uh, that creates an important context, and it very much affects the nature of the, the sale and of the opportunities and of, of the challenges you face, because where it's strategic, customers are going to be more critical about vendors. And finally, there's a category we're calling capabilities, where customers are buying not for a specific solution, but rather buying a, a, a standard that they can apply across their solution. So we'll get into some more de details about that. Moving on to the first one, the, the point solution, the single problem solver. It's one problem um, we've seen any number of these things from, from reducing waste in, in a in a uh, uh, welding operation to uh, trapping pests in a warehouse. Um, the, the advantage of these, of these single point solutions is that, that they have a si simple demonstrable ROI. If we solve this problem, the, it will bring us uh, a certain amount of return. We know what the investment is going to be because we cost out the project. End of story, we can move on with it. And quite often, these projects are initiated within uh, operations technology, within, within OT, as a, a, a supervisor of a particular business process in the physical world says, I can fix this with a fairly straightforward solution. I can justify the cost. That focus on solving that specific problem contains the cost and time and organizational overhead. It limits what further can be done with the project, but it gets it done. It gets it out there. Here are a couple of examples of that. The first one is, is the New Orleans Police Department, which, of course, has crowd control problems in its heavily touristed uh, Bourbon Street area. And it worked with Cisco using an existing surveillance pl platform to deploy 300 cameras. Simple, simple solution, you know, not necessarily cheap. They're 300 cameras, it's a lot of video, but straightforward and, and, and not uncommon. Solves the problem. We can observe what people are doing on the streets and address the problems as they come up. Another one is a, a, a pest control solution from uh, Bayer that, was a, uh, that addresses uh, pests in, in warehouses. And it basically is a replacement of going around and checking the, the traps, the, the pest traps in a warehouse to see which ones have been triggered, which ones need to be replaced, and what your current up your 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 current pest problem is, instead of doing a kind of visiting of these things, the data are consolidated and uh, the the the, tra the traps are instrumented, connect wirelessly to a to a control panel and you, you know what traps have been triggered and, and you can choose what to do next. Very simple. The opportunities and constraints in this category of, of IoT solutions 
is that the opportunity is that the, the limited solution simplifies selling. You are of a problem. You, you, you need a project to fix it. Our component, our piece of the puzzle, or our solution will solve that problem. You don't have to talk about ramifications, future growth, integration, any of those things. It just solves the problem and gets out of there. There really are two kinds of situations and two kinds of customers that come up in this space. The first of them is the, the, what we most often think about IoT. It's a custom pro project. Customer has a problem. Somebody has an idea for a solution. They hear you have a component that can contribute to that solution or, for that matter, a complete solution. And, and you get together and, and you make a transaction. But I was kind of hinting at the other, other category, which are packaged and bundled solutions. And that, in fact, one example of that is, is the buyer pest control. So when a vendor like buyer wants to have a product or a service that's simple, straightforward, and incorporates IoT, customers can buy a, a complete package solution. The next step up is bundled, which is more flexible, needs to be built into the customer's particular situation, but it's straightforward. It solves that problem. It may in, include components from multiple vendors. There may be a small amount of uh, installation and integration, but it's pretty much straightforward about solving that problem, getting it in, in and out. It still fits that those parameters of being simple, straightforward, demonstrable ROI, and largely standalone. The next step up, the next category we mentioned is, is point solutions plus. We have a problem, we want to solve it, but we know this potential future use of the project or the data or the learning, some part of that has an upside, and we're willing to put in the time and effort and additional expense to get a, a potentially larger upside out of the original project. Um, and this is actually often characteristics of packaged and bundled solutions where the vendor of the package says, this will just solve your problem, just buy it. Vendor is meanwhile saying, once those are installed or deployed, we can, order, we can offer add-on services and that in fact is is what buyer does for instance and i have no doubt that that cisco will be approaching uh new orleans uh, i just got a a, a reminder um if, if you're having problems please refresh refresh your your screen for, for to, to deal with the fact that we we were late in bringing up the presentation Re refresh that that page of your browser so what i was saying was that um Package solutions often have a, an intended upside. The, ba the buyer uh, solution, we will, you know, you'll know when the pest attack and the traps will be replaced, has moved on to predictive uh, maintenance, basically saying we're using data from all of the warehouses we are monitoring and specifically from yours so we can tell you where and when you think you, we think you may have a pest problem and we can help you devise means of, of uh, dealing with that. Um, one of the ways this happens is that a local focal uh, point solution will typically generate an enormous amount of data. It will be analyzed close to the source, actions will be taken, and the data is discarded. Um, for lots of reasons, you typically do not want to uh, transmit and store all the data coming off of one of these solutions. But one way to make that leverageable, to create a future benefit from the point solution, is to create data summaries and consolidate them and centralize them, send them to a data center or the cloud for additional analysis, even if you don't know specifically what that analysis will be. In many cases, the original basic point solution, because of its positive ROI, justifies uh, the, the, the sensor deployment, and then the next project comes along, can assume a zero cost for, for sensor deployment, and can generate an ROI for additional work based on the data coming from those, 
those sensors. So the point solution is is the toe in the in the door. It, it's a it's a land and expand st strategy, both on a on a cust custom and a packaged basis. Another way you can build out from a single point solution by replication and sale scaling. This project we did here worked here. I think every other production line, every other factory, every other location should do it. We we that's the way to grow out of of, of that original point solution. Here are some examples of, of solutions that start with a, a straightforward problem solution and, and definitely lead to further work. The first one is a uh, a beer membrane filtration system from a, a large company that does all kinds of filtration of all kinds of of fluids, but it has a, a special product for for a a beer membrane filtration system, which uh, replaces chemical means of, of 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 filtering beer, and the IoT aspect of that, the monitoring was built originally to simply monitor the the behavior of the filter and make sure it was operating prop properly and now the data have been used to help optimize that part of the brewing process throughout throughout the the entire customer company's operations data came just to keep it up and running data was then used for optimization uh, amber agriculture is a is another similar kind of 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 application using wireless sensors they monitored the height of grain in silos giving the the farmer the uh, uh an ongoing feedback as to how much is stored as an as the an extension it moves into evaluating co the current market price for the stored grain helping the farmer decide when to sell the the opportunities and constraints for the point solution plus uh, uh, category is recurrent revenue. If if the solution is replicated or expanded, typically additional re revenue uh, re uh, recurs to the vendor who provided all or part of that solution. So you make the sale. You may spend more on making the sale than you might want to want to for just that sale. But there's a there's a future upside, so it can be worth more. In custom solutions, the plus is the potential upside. When you build something, you may build it at a relatively low margin with the expectation that it can be expanded. Same thing is, is true with, with um, package solutions. You'll offer it at an attractive but profitable entry price with the expectation that that expansion will bring margin expansion. When you do this, when you build a, a solution for a specific problem in a specific location and you want to be able to expand you have to account for for the the geographic coverage for expanding it out of out of that location that's a particularly an issue with with communications with with the sending of data wirelessly between the sensors and the and the local or distant processing the next category is strategic iot individual projects that are part of a customer IoT strategy. It's one solution among several or many. Those solutions may be in a sequence. First, we're going to do this, and then we're going to do that. Or it may be we are seeking all of the solutions in this category affecting this particular aspect of our physical plant. We're allowing our operations people the freedom to, to make their choices, but we're and we're allocating resources for them to to, to build those solutions, but we're not saying what should be built or when because they know more about it. The potential here is to become uh, the the a the vendor for that kind that particular component for that class of solutions in a whole strategy. There's a real opportunity to be there, not simply to scale out and make more sales, but to actually participate in helping the customer affect the strategy is a real opportunity here to build a long-term close relationship for the with the customer and therefore it's worth investing more on creating these kinds of deals 
And it's important to notice, note that customer strategies are often flexible. Um, they, they plan, in many cases, they plan a step-by-step -step strategy, but they react to new data, new opportunities, and things like that. And becoming part of that flexibility, being flexible, helping the customer decide is a real opportunity to form, a, a, excuse me, a real partnership with the customer. Here are a couple examples of, of those things. Telia et al. is a consortium of, of power companies that uh, had a large variety of metering solutions and wanted to kind of uh, ensure that they could be, could, could be grown strategically, either individually of the consortium companies or, 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 or amongst them. And, and they worked with Ericsson to, to, to both uh, specify the kind of communications package. They use the Ericsson massive IoT strategy, which provides low-cost uh, communications where, where, where appropriate and other communications where necessary, and use the Ericsson IoT platform as well. So we have a strategy. We're going to leverage just simple metering solutions, but we want to settle on, on, on how to approach it. So we're going to we're going to standardize across a group of, of, of related companies to do that. A similar one is, is Daimler Trucks Asia, where the, the solution was built, uh, the, origi the original, uh, the, the first benefit from the solution was, was basically knowing where and when the trucks had broken down. But the strategy was to overall improve the quality of, of the trucks, to feedback right into the, the design and manufacture process to make Daimler Trucks in Asia, Daimler Trucks Asia, produce better, more satisfactory, more reliable products. It was from the start a strategic move. The opportunities and constraints here are that the scope is wide. You're really accompanying a company on their strategy and on the evolution of their strategy. You're working with an array of of, of partners. For any given project, there may, may be a relatively small number of partners, but if you're participating throughout a strategy, those may change as, as the different kinds of solutions call for different kinds of, of components. That's actually a real opportunity because partner networking is a key part of going to market in IoT. You have the opportunity to own a key component wherever the customer company implements a solution that requires that kind of component, they will go to you. That's not implied in, in your original uh, role. That you, may, you may have simply been brought in for a particular project, but if you demonstrate that, that your solution works in that project and it's in the context of a, many projects as part of the strategy, you have the opportunity to, to become the, the standard, which is actually the next category we'll get into. And there are, of course, uh, geographic implications here. If you're part of a strategy, you have to be part of that strategy wherever the customer needs to implement that strategy. Because it's strategic, management cons consulting is often a participant in, in this collection, in the strategy of IoT projects, which means that's a route to market. If you est establish a, a strong relationship with the management consulting company, you can be suggested as, as a good vendor, and it's also an opportunity to build relationships for other customers if you demonstrate an ability to help them help their customer execute their strategy. Let's move on to the last category. So these are capabilities. You're selling to the customer a standard component for a particular part of all their or most of their IoT solutions. Standard component for multiple projects could be the piece of software, a piece of hardware, a service. Um, and it's often uh, the, the components chosen are often infrastructural. You know, the particular projects may vary greatly, but we're going to choose a, a cloud service, a cloud platform, or a particular database or application platform. We're going to choose a particular mode of, of communications for all the projects that need that mode of con communication, choose a vendor for for that mode of communications. Here are some examples. Uh, the Ellison Institute is, is a research medical facility in San Diego, uh, and, and it doesn't know now 
exactly what are the projects it's going to be be doing. It's a, it's a research facility. It's avant-garde. There's going to be a lot more. Uh, they went with AT&T both for the communications and for their platform for all of these projects. They said basically, we, we, we want to treat that problem as solved. And no matter what we're doing going forward, here's how we're going to communicate. And here's how we're going to, to integrate the data. ENBW is, is a, a, a company that was in the um, vehicle business. And it wanted to expand into and integrate with, with, um, with smart cities. And there's kind of some some obvious opportunities, the one that comes to mind is, is parking there. And so they created a, a new company, SMIGHT, or S-M-I-G-H-T, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. And, and the intention here is to make sure that these two related but somewhat independent companies continue to be able to, to integrate and create integrated solutions. So what they did is they went with Bosch, and they went with Bosch's IoT platforms. So both companies are using those platforms. That allows them to integrate solutions and build and build integrated solutions between these two somewhat separate separate companies. Here, the opportunity is for revenue growth. As the companies do more projects, whenever they need that particular kind of component, they will come to you. And there are more points of contact with, with your customer and partners because the projects themselves may be diverse, they may be in different locations or different departments. You're going to meet more people in the customers, in the customer organization, and you're going to be engaging with multiple partners because these projects are actually discrete and different. And as I say, more interaction with IoT partner vendors is better for, for just about any vendor. This real stickiness here. The company has chosen you for the standard. You can't yank out a standard. So you have a, a an enduring relationship when you win, when you win one of these these contracts. However, you must be careful because you're you're dealing with a lot of other partners. So you must not try to poach on the other partners. You must play well with those. You must you must coordinate it. I mean, you don't have to, but all of those things will will enhance your your relationship with your end customer and with the partners themselves. So it's it's a matter of regard, you know, of re being careful about the turf that you're playing in. In summary, we looked at these these IoT projects with an eye toward how vendors could could analyze the opportunity um, and address the issue of IoT not being the thing you're actually selling. You're selling a piece of a solution. So Given that, how do you how do you analyze the opportunity from the IoT piece point of view? The the categorization we believe is is simple and meaningful. It does not take long to figure out where each project stands in the organization, what the context is. But for all that, there's certainly some overlap. There's clearly an overlap between one and one plus. And in fact, you may often be wanting to upsell from from one to one plus from point solution to point solution plus um, uh, standards are, are part of a strategy. But you can see the mix of these things and the mix of, of the opportunities that they offer. We think this, this categorization is, is very, very useful for evaluating the potential of each opportunity, which helps you decide on the, on the investment to make. It allows you to right size your sale eff sales effort and tune your, your go-to-market to meet, meet the opportunity at, at hand. And that um, brings my, my presentation to an end. Um, there's a way to, to offer questions, and I'll, I'll begin addressing them. Thank you all very much. Please stay, stay safe. I wish you all very well. Let's, let's look at the questions. So what be the total business associated with IoT in terms of investment? What what do I believe will be the increase in the future? Um, we have a, a, a market forecast, and um, uh, we have modeled it out as as a uh, an increasing, continually continuously 
accelerating curve until we hit this crisis. So the crisis slows us down, and it will take probably two years at least to get back onto that up ramp. I believe the total global market for IT components, for IT solutions that we're projecting out about five years is in the $700 billion range. Um, the question here about a copy of the slides, and that's been answered. Um, another one's been answered, and thank you for that. And thanks for reconnecting us. So the other questions have to do with our technical problems or not. What we hope we solve them. You can have copies of the slides and a and a video of the of the presentation um, will be posted. I, I apologize once again for the technical difficulties. Uh, I hope you're all well and and thank you all very much. All right, everyone, please feel free to reach out to Ezra with any more follow-up questions. If you have a few moments, it would be greatly appreciated if you could fill out the survey on your screen. The replay version of the webcast will be available after the event and will be sent out to you via email. To view, our, to view a list of our upcoming and past webinars, please visit tbri.com. Thank you and have a great day.